So a relatively new effort for the group is also focusing on the automation of multi-step chemical syntheses and the automation of uh, chemical reaction screening in very small scale. So the group has worked on a lot of computational techniques to design synthetic pathways, to predict the outcomes of organic reactions, to recommend the conditions with which we should try to run organic reactions. But these are all coming from the literature. So they, these are machine learning models largely trained on data we get from the literature. And we of course don't have control, direct control, over what's published in the literature. We're working with this historical data. And so a really exciting direction that we're taking now is to try to couple this literature data, which is very rich and, and captures to some degree the past hundred years of chemistry, with our own automation platform to generate new data in a very focused and high throughput fashion. You can imagine a situation in which there is a new chemical reaction, so a new way of combining molecules in a very specific way that lets us access a new type of structure which is found to have good properties. Maybe it's a new class of antibiotics. But we might not have a full understanding over the limits of that transformation. We might not know if it's robust enough. And what we'd like to do is take this sort of baseline understanding of a chemical reaction. So maybe we've seen two papers published on this chemical reaction. We don't really know how well it works. We really don't know what types of structures it's compatible with. But we'd like to find out. And so we'd like to take this sort of seed of an understanding that we have from the literature and combine that with our own data generation to, again, very rapidly and efficiently learn right, what makes this reaction work and what's the, the scope of it, right? what's the extent to which it applies to new structures. And there's this idea of a feedback loop now between data we find in the literature and data we generate experimentally. And we're thinking about ways to design computational tools that can merge the two efficiently. So in the fewest numbers of experiments, how do we most rapidly increase our knowledge of chemical reactivity? The goal of this work is to have a better and more formalized understanding of chemical reactivity. And that has a number of, of benefits downstream. So it makes synthesis more predictable. Right? We can, again, get closer to anticipating what will happen in the real world just through a simulation in silico. And that means that we'll have, hopefully in the laboratory, fewer failed experiments, which will lead to faster times accessing new molecular structures. The dream is that if there's a new molecular structure that a chemist or a model proposes, we'd really like to test that as quickly as possible to know if it's going to be high performing or not. And to do so, we need to plan out the synthesis and we need to understand if each of those reaction steps are likely to succeed or likely to fail. And with the kinds of models that we're developing, we can try to quantify that and quickly assess which molecules are easy to synthesize and which are hard to synthesize. Now there's a, a much more ambitious goal, I would say, behind some of this work, which is trying to fully automate the process of creating these new molecular structures. So synthesis, synthesis of these new structures is a major bottleneck in discovery efforts. You know, between the time a chemist proposes a dozen new molecules to test, right, that they believe might be active against a certain protein target, it might take weeks or months to actually get those molecules in physical form to test them in biological assays. And sometimes that relies on in-house synthesis, sometimes it relies on contracting that synthesis out overseas to contract research organizations. But it's costly and it's time consuming and it slows down the process tremendously. Now, if we have a complete understanding of chemical reactivity or complete enough from these computational models, and if we combine that with laboratory automation and robotics, we can start to think about automating the steps it takes to produce these new structures. So automatically picking the solutions off the shelf of your starting materials, automatically mixing them in the right ratios and heating them, stirring them, purifying the product of that reaction. And if we have a robust enough platform, we can do that multiple times. So we can take then the product we've just made and feed it back in as a starting material for the next step. And this is of course something that chemists do um, by hand quite well. And it's the way that we've approached synthesis for decades or hundreds of years. But the idea that we can automate the process and have a robotic system be sort of adaptive and flexible enough 
to respond to the analyses it runs and to understand if it's succeeding or failing in its task. Um, that could be hugely enabling. You can imagine a situation in which the generation of new molecular structures and testing those structures is again no longer limited by human time and expert chemist time, but the availability of these platforms, which then makes it more of a capital problem than a human resource problem.